Hey guys, this is Pooja Gupta. Welcome to Media Mentor. This is a subject video for FYBAMNC students. So all the FYBAMNC students, you should definitely subscribe to my channel as I will be coming up with all your subject videos in a module format. So this video is your ECS module 1 video wherein my student Genevieve have explained the module 1 in a very simplified way. So if you have missed out your lectures for any reason, you should definitely look at this video, understand the concept and yes, you are done with your subject. Time, let's get started with the ECS module 1. Hey guys, this is Genevieve and today we are going to start off with the first module of ECS that is Effective Communication Skills which you have in FYBAMMC Semester 1. The very first module in it is Introduction to Communication. Now there are three things that you have to remember about communication. First, what is communication? Communication is said to be the transfer or conveying of a message from one end to the other. It could be any sort of a message. It could be any information that you have to pass on from one person to another. That is the basic fundamental of what communication is. Now, how is it important in media? Most important part is that communication brings people close to each other. Now, use this in your actual life. Imagine if you did not have news, what would happen? Was there any other way you would understand what is going on in your community? in your country or on the whole would you ever understand what is happening in different countries will you ever be understanding that part without the help of media would you know who your prime minister is no we would not we know all of this just because of news and news is a mode of communication if they wouldn't bring any information from their end to us as a mass, we would never know what is happening around us. The third most important part is what is the basic process of communication. The first is the source, the source of the message. Now remember, communication is the transfer of a message from one end to the other end. Source is the starting point of this communication process. Now the source will encode a message in his or her mind to convey it to the receiver. Your receiver is at the other end of this whole process. After encoding a message, he or she will think of a channel that is a method through which he or she will convey the message to the receiver. This channel could be newspaper. It could be verbal, it could be telephone, it could be a letter, it could be an email, a movie, anything, anything of that sort. After the channel is decided, the receiver's end is important to decode the message. The receiver will try to analyze and understand what message is coming to it and will understand the message and hence receive it. So this is the basic structure or basic process of communication so you have the source encoding channel decoding and receiver at the very end the receiver will give a response that response is known as a feedback the feedback goes back to the source the circle keeps repeat next you have technical communication and general communication so there are these two types of very important forms of communication. Let's see the differences. A general communication is anything that contains a very basic message. It is informal in style and approach, which means it has no specific pattern. It does not have a systematic order. It is mostly oral and it does not require a specific type of an audience. It also uses less technical terms or also no technical terms at all or graphics. You do not need to be 
a specific type of learned or trained to understand this kind of a communication. On the other hand, when it comes to technical communication, it contains a very, very precise technical message. It is mostly formal in style. It is very systematic. It has a specific order, specific set pattern to flow in. It is both oral or written. It can be any of those. It has a very specific, a specifically trained type of an audience. Also, they use jargons or graphics that only these limited people will understand. A jargon is a very technical term when it comes to any sort of a communication. There will be words within a community or within an organization that only they will understand. Next, you have barriers. In barriers, what exactly is a barrier? Anything that disrupts or disturbs the process of communication is a barrier. Let's talk about types. There are several types. There is environmental, there is weather or climate, there is distance, gender, perceptual, semantic, hierarchical, emotional, cultural, social and econ economical and technical and there are many more. Now these types of barriers are very simple to understand. For example, semantic barrier. A semantic barrier is nothing but a linguistic barrier. That is, the language that a person is conveying the message in should be understood by his or her audience. If the audience does not understand that language, there is no point of the communication. In hierarchical barrier, in a company, for example, you have a manager, you have the employee. The manager is at a higher position the employees always feel that they are inferior, lower, so they do not communicate well with the managers. They feel that they are very low to even speak up. So that is a hierarchical barrier. You have distance, time, place. These are all barriers. For example, you have a client in America you have, and you are in India. So always there will be a problem with the timing. Their morning is your night, your morning is their night. And it, it just keeps building up that problem. So that is going to be another barrier. Emotional barrier. You have perceptual barrier. Perceptual barrier is something that is very, very uh, personal. It depends on a person, how the person thinks of a message or, or understands a specific message. It, any Anything has two meanings. Anything can have two or more meanings. Depends on the receiver, how the person is taking it. Misunderstandings, for example. There are many such barriers that we are studying with. Next, we have what are the methods to overcome barriers? Now, these are some of the methods, you know, knowing and understanding your target audience's language. They are their level of understanding, how their backgrounds are, what misunderstandings are possible, to improve on these kind of things, to match the times, to not use slangs, spelling errors, abstract languages, to always understand the culture of the audience, to understand what distractions are there for them, what are the emotions behind whatever you're saying and what are their emotions. You're always supposed to understand this before you start even conveying a message. Next, you have the types of communication, three major types, that is verbal, non-verbal and written. In verbal, you have the face-to-face -face communications. For example, when you meet your friends, the type of conversation you have is a face-to-face. -face. Next is telephone or mobile phone. So whenever you make a call to somebody and you tell them something, that is a verbal in the form of telephone or mobile phone type of communication. These are examples. Voicemail answering machine. These are recorded styles. Voicemails are recorded. You have several answering machines that we always come across in our day-to-day -day life. The second type is non-verbal. Under non-verbal, you have expressions, gestures. Now, expressions and gestures are very important to understand because these, including body language, these are the types where you see the person 
you're talking to and understand what he or she wants to say without them saying it aloud. For example, when you say something and a person raises a brow, you know that this person is either confused or angry. So you actually get a response just by looking at their face. If you ask someone how their exams went and they don't say anything, they just show a thumbs up. You know that the papers have gone well, right? That is non-verbal communication. The last type is written communication. Very easily understood. Anything that is written, email, letters, notices, anything in the return, written form is the written type of communication. Next, you have oral communication and media. So there are various types of communications where you use your oral skills. For example, you have anchoring, interview, you have panel discussions, you have elocutions, you have debates, small skits, public speaking. So all of this is a type of communication that you are doing orally, hence oral communication. Next, you have listening skills. In listening skills, you have the five major parts of a process of listening. First, you hear it. Now, when the source is giving you an information, the receiver is trying to decode it. How is the receiver decoding it? The receiver first hears it. He attends to it, gives attention. He tries to understand what is being said. He responds, that is, gives the feedback. He remembers and it goes back to the source and the cycle keeps con continuing. That is the process. There are three types of listening skills. First is empathetic. Empathetic is when you try to empathize with the person that is speaking to you. You are trying to understand the emotions the person is going through. Second is therapeutic. Therapeutic is when you try to listen to a person and analyze his or her condition and give suggestions or speak in such a way that they would change their, the way they think, what change the way they live or understand things. Third is dialogue or relation. have a person speaking to you and you are listening to it just because you want to gain more information, more understanding, you want to understand their perspective about a certain topic, etc. And this is the end of module one. I hope this has really helped you guys. And next up, we will have a video on module two that is reading. So stay tuned. Thank you and all the best. I believe this video was definitely helpful. So more such videos. Don't forget to subscribe my channel.